Oh, oh. shit! Congratulations, Green Bay. Congratulations, Green Bay. I said run them. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday. I am here. I'm wearing shout out to uh, my buddy Daniel Hernandez, who gave me the salute to service hat. This is my combat hat because I am going to war right now because, you know, it, it's crazy because I I have been one of those people that, I, that have said that Josh Allen is overrated. I don't have anything against Josh Allen. I don't hate Josh Allen. But there's the, been this love fest that he can't do anything wrong. And, of course, when you look at Dak Prescott, we will judge Dak Prescott on a totally different scale than anybody else. Because they say, well, Dak Prescott can't win the, the big one, so you have to get rid of him. And the funny thing is, is this, and, and, and I, I, I hear what you're saying. There's multiple ways that you can go about trying to fix a problem. The Cowboys truly have a problem. For some reason, we can play well enough to make the playoffs now, which is not something we used to actually do on a regular. If you look back, we had 2010, 11, and 13, where we were 8-8. Eight and eight. We made the playoffs in 20. Um, 14 we go ass ass there so in the course of five years we had one playoff appearance i don't know if you guys remember that but you think about at least where we've been since 2016 that you know we're in the playoffs more than we're not be that as it may in the end super bowls are what matter i get that but to get to a super bowl you first have to at least be able to get to the playoffs that's the first thing you have to do and people will say, Dak just can't win the big one. Get rid of him because we need to get somebody else. But here's the thing that I'm going to say. Well, right now, there's only one guy out there that's winning the big ones. And that seems to be Pat Mahomes. Lamar is going to probably get his second MVP. Lamar ain't won a Super Bowl, at least not yet. There's Aaron Rodgers. You could say, if, if you're saying Dak Prescott's a choker, you could look and say, well, Aaron Rodgers, over all those other years, except for the 2010 season, he wasn't doing it. We've seen Russell Wilson before. He ain't doing it right now. We've anointed people like Justin Herbert. Hell, he can't even win a playoff game either. Well, shoot, he can't even stay healthy through a season. Now, we've seen Joe Burrow at least go to a Super Bowl, but he didn't win it. And he was injured for the second time most of last year. We've seen, of course, Jalen Hurts. We anointed him after last year. And now we hear that he is a bit of a diva. He is changing plays. He's not approachable. And he's getting slammed by the media and so forth as a problem, a.k.a. Carson Wentz Part Two. So when I've talked about Josh Allen and, and 49er fans, oh my God, I, I pray that the 49ers do not win the Super Bowl. I think they're going to be worse than Eagle fans. I literally have some 49er fans that have sent a picture of themselves outside of uh, Levi Stadium there and basically telling me to suck it. You know, I've got Jason M., um, I, I think that's just Jason Mad, who's constantly telling me that uh, Josh Allen is on a whole different level than Dak Prescott. We've seen so many people that just make excuses, specifically guys like Dan Orlowski. But oh my God, this was, this just did my heart good, okay? Ryan Clark, who seems to be a more balanced person, he's not a fan of the Cowboys and things like that or of Dak Prescott. He's not that guy. Um, but he is a guy that keeps it consistent. I guess we could say Dan Orlowski keeps it consistent because he swears that, you know, Josh Allen is a Hall of Famer, uh, you know, in the making, that everybody else is just letting him down. Well, yesterday was a, a really interesting day because uh, Dan Orlowski got, got, got rocked multiple times by Ryan Clark. And it really felt like 
He went to church on him and literally beat him down. Let me, let's listen to this because this is gold. And this is one of those cases where, and part of the animosity about Dak Prescott, because we keep saying he keeps failing in the playoffs, can't get the big one done. You know, they've come up with statistics like last year about, you know, how good he's played and all that. But they were home last year with Joe Burrow coming to town, home in Buffalo, and they scored 10 points. They lost the same weekend we did on a short week having to go to San Francisco after playing Monday night against Tampa Bay. Nobody made any excuses for Dak Prescott. They just killed Dak Prescott. But let's listen to this here. Yeah, you guys talking about Kansas City. I, I, I firmly believe, and we talk about this as the season goes along. When we get to this point and we have these quarterback conversations or team conversations, we talk about championship pedigree, but we also talk about how the game is played on the margins. It's no longer about the overall team. It's this specific three hours where we have to make a few more plays than the next team. And when you go to this sequence in the fourth quarter with Buffalo, you look at these continuous missed opportunities by this team. This was almost an interception. That's Kansas City making a play. This right here is the fumble mm. by Josh Allen that was fortunately recovered mm. by um, Buffalo. Mm -hmm. If you just fall on it, it's not a scoop and score. You look at this particular play, a missed opportunity again. And we've lamented about it. And, and look, there is an ease of putting this on Josh Allen, and rightfully so, because there were some plays out there to make. But when we get into these playoffs and we start having these conversations about what separates these teams, obviously we go to the quarterback play. But more importantly, we go to the plays that are made on the margins. And as that sequence just showed in the fourth quarter, Buffalo came up short a few plays than Kansas City <laughs> no, did in order to no, get away. No, no, no Marcus. Don't oh, you say this. Buffalo came up short. <laughs> Don't you say that a quarterback could have made some more plays. Marcus, I know you didn't show that Trent McDuffie should have had an interception <laughs> and that if Trent McDuffie <laughs> wouldn't have touched it, that LeJarrius Sneed would have picked it off. Marcus, oh, I know Would've you didn't talk it. about yep. him rolling out of the pocket and not throwing the ball to Dalton Schultz when Dalton Schultz was open. Oh, I know you didn't talk about him holding it and waiting for Shakir to, to clear and throw it past the safety instead of hitting Kim K or instead of hitting Stephon Diggs. No, that didn't happen because all that happened was Stephon Diggs dropped the ball. Josh Allen didn't fumble the Get ball him. and Kansas City mm -hmm. didn't fall yeah. on it. Josh Allen didn't try to throw Get a pick him. and Kansas City mm -hmm. didn't catch it. All that happened yesterday was Buffalo <laughs> continuously let Josh Allen down. Ain't no way other things happen in a football game <laughs> that you sometimes right gotta now. play through freaking adversity. And guess Get who did it for the third time in the playoffs was Patrick Mahomes. You beat him in the regular season all the time, Josh. But when the Get stakes him. have raised, you ain't one nan. Are you okay? Bam! I did this with him for four hours. I know, I know. You don't I know, know now. But, yeah. <laughs> Let's you do it again. You, you got anything? I mean, if... if you don't know now. If, if we're... If we got one big play down the field... If caught, we... It's a different game. Credit Kansas City for their win. Unbelievable. Hey, Dan. Dan. It's an issue when you say. That's what we're we saying. It's on the margins. It's an issue when you say if we yeah, get yeah, one yeah. big you First of all, who is we? You, you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Baker Mayfield. There you have it, okay? All I'm asking is this, okay? Because we have this mentality of it's just the quarterback. It wasn't just Josh Allen. I will give you that. It was not just, just Josh Allen. It wasn't. But you got to look at it and say there were things that Josh Allen did. That series where he fumbled the ball, that series that should have been a pick six, that th those incomplete passes where had he maybe done the check downs and the guys that were open instead of going for all things that Josh Allen has done throughout his, his whole career, throughout his whole career that are holding him back. Now, that's not to say that Josh Allen can't learn from those things, because see, the thing about Josh Allen is he's big. He's strong. He's a tough guy. And sometimes he figures that his whole athletic skill, his cannon for an arm, his body of Adonis that he has are going to be able to lead him to do more than he should be trying to do. And that is something that can be fixed. The thing that 
it's amazing because people will say that Dak Prescott sucks so bad. The thing that's kind of still questioned in my mind of people's thoughts on that are Josh Allen, when they played the Cowboys, do you remember the change in philosophy that actually turned that team around? The thing that turned them around was against the Dallas Cowboys, a team that does take away the football a lot, they decided to take the game out of Josh Allen's hands. They relied on running the football and made sure that Josh Allen, who is an incredible talent, who can make incredible plays, but makes just as many bad ones that basically take away from it, they took it out of his hands. I don't recall the Dallas Cowboys ever saying, we're going to take it out of Dak Prescott's hands, especially not to put it on the running game, because unlike the Buffalo Bills, we did not have a running game. So yeah, this is war right here. I enjoyed Ryan Clark more on that whole spiel right there. And that literally is the difference of how they treat Dak Prescott versus other players out there. And this is where, unfortunately, as Cowboy fans, some of you believe that it is just the quarterback. It's just Dak Prescott. And that we can just literally go and throw him away. But I ask you, I ask you, because the only quarterback out there right now that's winning Super Bowls is Pat Mahomes. It's Pat, Mah it's Pat Mahomes. If you're saying that not winning the Super Bowl makes you a choker, well, you didn't make just about everybody else a choker, or at least uh, a recent choker in the case of Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson's and, you know, Deshaun Watson's and, uh, you know, Jalen Hurts and all those because last I checked, they ain't won a Super Bowl either. Food for thought. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. And as always, I appreciate you guys. And we have more coming up about the Eagles. Oh, my goodness. Philly 500. Whew. He's literally, and I have to look at it. He's literally done a video. Uh, Pete Crazy. Jalen Hurts is not Carson Wentz. Wow. Disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? That's no. They suck. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <sighs> Jalen Carter? It's like, they shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <sighs> Jalen Carter? It's like, they shit on you. Kill them. Oh, my goodness. Did he say they, they cock it on them? I hate the style of defense. I 